Qualifying for the Chinese Grand Prix is over and once again it is Max Verstappen on pole position. But what did we learn? Well in today's video I'm going to be talking about qualifying and taking a look at the data from the sprint race to see what we learned from that as we're going to be doing a data analysis. If you enjoyed the video then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top five teams later on, which is Aston Martin, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull, so stick around for that. Yep, Verstappen is once again on pole position, and he has taken his fifth pole position in a row, which makes him the first driver since 1999 to take the opening five pole positions, which was last done by Mika Hakkinen in the McLaren Mercedes. Yesterday, we saw the top speeds that the teams were able to reach in sprint qualifying. After the sprint race, the teams were allowed to alter their setups. So let's now take a look at the top speeds that the teams were able to reach in the main Grand Prix qualifying. As usual, I'm gonna be taking the top speed that was set by the fastest driver from each team. And what can we see when we look at these? Well, firstly, compared to sprint qualifying, the top speeds are a lot higher potentially indicating that teams have maybe reduced the downforce a little bit on the cars, as they were running a little bit too much, maybe because of the wet weather that they knew were coming. Also, what we can see is that the top speeds are much more aligned when it comes to the top speed, as Haas, Williams, Aston Martin and Red Bull are all reaching 336 kilometers per hour. McLaren and Alpine are lacking a little bit in a straight line, as they were only able to reach 331 kilometers per hour. One thing that looks a little bit different than usual is Ferrari, as they do look like they have reduced their top speed a little bit, maybe opting for a little bit more downforce. So we've seen the top speed reached in qualifying, but now the question is what teams look good and what teams didn't look so good? Well, one team that has not looked great all weekend is Williams. It was an improvement for them, at least for Alex Albon, as he did reach Q2. But overall, the Williams is still lacking, as they are still massively on the back foot with two damaged chassis. Albon did say that the car was on a knife edge, and we did see that as Logan Sargent had a spin during Q1. But what did we learn from the sprint race for them? Well, when you look at the times of Albon, and Joe Guan Yu, who was ninth in the sprint race, then honestly, the race pace of the Williams isn't as bad as the qualifying pace. This can give them some hope for a little bit of a recovery drive in the main Grand Prix. I picked out Joe because in the sprint race, Joe did have a decent gap to the cars behind and ahead, so it's not like Albon was stuck in a main train with him. This can give them some confidence that Albon could do something in the race, Points are going to be pretty difficult, but I do think we can see him maybe climb up a place or two, especially if there is a bit of chaos ahead. Williams in general, though, are going to be looking forward to Miami when hopefully they have one new chassis for Alex Albon. Williams are not looking great this weekend, but one midfield team that I am going to give some praise to is Alpine. Alpine have been pretty awful this year, it has to be said. But this weekend, they do look a lot better. They finally got both cars out of Q1, and Ocon is lining up in 13th place. Which is not too bad, and that is where he finished in the sprint race as well. This weekend, there is actually hope that the upgrades on the Alpine is going to move them forwards, instead of backwards, like we saw in Suzuka. For their sake, I do hope this is the case. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top five teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, it feels like I'm saying the same thing every single weekend, as it was a tale of two halves. Once again, Lance Stroll failed to make it to Q3, but teammate Fernando Alonso had an incredible lap and is lining up in third place on the grid. It's a bit repetitive, but this will probably continue to be the case until Lance Stroll is no longer in F1. In the sprint race as well, when you compare both of their times, you can see how Alonso has a pace edge over his teammate, even in the sprint race as well. Remember that during this period, Alonso is going faster while he's building the Great Wall of Fernando, 
by defending from the two Ferraris and the Red Bull of Perez, which did get quite aggressive from Alonso. So I think that's pretty impressive that he was still able to go faster than Stroll. One thing that concerns me though, looking at this, which you'll see later on when I look at the Ferrari pace, is that Aston Martin's race pace does seem to be falling off pretty quickly. And you'll see that, like I said, when I talk about Ferrari. For Mercedes, it was a complete change of fortunes. For George Russell, yesterday he was out in Q2, but he made it all the way to Q3 today. Teammate Lewis Hamilton was on the front row in the sprint qualifying, and he was able to convert that to a great second place finish in the sprint race, and it was all looking good. And then Grand Prix qualifying happened. Lewis Hamilton, as he says, altered his setup, and this change, along with the mistake, meant that he went out in Q1. For Mercedes, that's not really that good. His teammate George Russell, though, did make it through to Q3, which is an improvement for him. For Mercedes, there is going to be a concern, which is their race pace when compared to the drivers they actually want to be fighting. And to show that, I brought up the sprint race pace of Lewis Hamilton, and we're going to compare it to Charles Leclerc. Note that Hamilton spent the majority of the sprint race on his own, whereas Leclerc was tucked up in a battle with several other cars. Yet, as soon as Charles dispatches of Sainz and Alonso, you can see his true pace, which is a lot faster than Hamilton. And that shows me where Mercedes are right now. They are simply too slow in race pace. And this weekend for Hamilton, he was too slow in qualifying. It is going to be a tricky race for Lewis, but I do think a point or maybe two points should be possible, especially if there is chaos ahead. For McLaren, it was a great day for them in qualifying as both Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri beat both of the Ferrari cars in qualifying. However, it cannot be denied Lando Norris, as great as his sprint qualifying performance was, he bottled the start of the sprint race and let go of a potential sprint win or at least a second place. And you can see how much stronger his pace was in the sprint race compared to Hamilton. If Norris didn't make that mistake at the tricky turn one, then I think he could have built up at least some sort of a gap. Verstappen would have probably still come through and got him, but it is points down the drain. In the race tomorrow, he at least has potential to score some more strong points. And with him not being first, then I do think it's less likely that he will make the same mistake off of the line, as he'll probably have to be a little bit more cautious so that he doesn't rear-end another car. For Ferrari, it was not a great day. Carlos Sainz had a spin in qualifying and crashed, causing a red flag. But yet, he was able to get back on track and he was back in qualifying. But he still finds himself and Leclerc being beaten by the McLaren duo. For Charles Leclerc, he finally beat Sainz in Grand Prix qualifying for the first time in a few races. In the sprint race, they had a very aggressive battle, as Sainz was not willing to give an inch to his teammate. For Ferrari though, there is some confidence from the sprint race, and I do think they're going to be looking pretty strong. And you can see that here when you look at the times of Leclerc, Alonso, Hamilton and Norris, you can see that the second Leclerc clears the train, he has great pace and he's able to pull away from those guys and he's almost able to match Max Verstappen, which you will see when we talk about Red Bull. This should give them some confidence for the race. However, it doesn't help them that they're going to be starting so far down. Also, the two drivers are together on the grid and I feel like they are going to need to work together but it doesn't look like they're really going to be in a position to work together after what we saw in the sprint race. And finally for Red Bull, it was pure domination for Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez as they take a 1-2 finish in qualifying and they do look mighty. In the sprint race as well, they looked like they had incredible tyre wear, meaning that I anticipate in the Grand Prix, they will probably just sail off into the distance. But it has to be said, Leclerc did have similar pace at the end. Unfortunately for Ferrari fans and Charles Leclerc though, he is starting too far back to really be able to do anything about Max Verstappen. So, what are my final predictions for the Chinese Grand Prix? Well, I think the top midfield driver and team will be Nico Hülkenberg in the Haast. And I do anticipate that Valtteri Bottas, even though he's starting alongside Hülkenberg, 
will have a terrible pit stop, which will cost him a lot of unnecessary time. But what about the top five in the Grand Prix? Well, I think in fifth place, it will be Fernando Alonso, unless the FIA give him a penalty for breathing the wrong way. Fourth place will be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. Third place will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Second place will be Sergio Perez. And I think it will be a simply lovely drive for Max Verstappen. And I think he's going to dominate the Chinese Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.